So welcome to the start of the next video. Um, weren't too happy with the last one to be honest, it was a bit bitty but at least it got a workshop update in there. Uh, thanks to all the subscribers so far, as of present we're up to 485 so 15 more and we're, we're halfway to a thousand so I'm really chuffed with that. Um, first job I've got in at the moment is a pressure test and diagnos uh, diagnosis on a BMW four cylinder diesel cylinder head. So I'm going to pressure test it first, see if it's any good, let the customer know and if it needs a reface I'll measure that and uh, and let them know that too. So I thought I would go through the process of pressure testing. The first thing to do is to make sure the head surface is nice and clean and then any waterways going into the cylinder head are clean for the pads to go across. This is a delta pressure tester. Uh, I think they're Australian I believe. This is the setting bar. This sets the depth of the cylinder head for the machine. So all you do with this is place it I always go in a stud hole to get the depth right. I've already preset this so I know that that's spot on but it's a case of undoing that moving this bar up and down. The next thing to do is to set these bars up at the height of this. So to do that you just wind these thumb screws down flip that bar over and then I get it where I can just see the bar start to lift like that and just double check it again this side What's that one done? Now this side. Right, once that's set, we put the cylinder head on. And what I want to do is get it where the water inlet is this on my side of the machine so the next job is to basically block all the waterways leaving one of them open for me to put compressed air into it So what I've done is lifted the head up against the clamps to clamp the head solid. I've now pumped some compressed air in it just to find if there's anything else that I need to block off. I've blocked off this one on the side and then I've noticed that there's a sensor switch here and a water outtake here. So what I'm going to do with those is I've had these little wooden cones made so I'll just screw them in to um, block those. So what I want to do now is get the pressure up to above what the rad cap would go off at so anywhere between 20 and 40 psi is enough. At the moment we're on 10 psi. got a leak here from the side so in fact what I need to do with that is to actually unscrew the joint
it's uh, just it's come out of the location drilling That's it, it's cracked it. So what I'm going to do now is that's on that's on 40 psi now, and what you can see is the air bleeding out the wood slightly from these little joiners that I've put in, but we've still got enough in to complete the pressure test. So I'm just going to check my pressure. I'm going to go and fill my test fluid up. So I'm, I'm just going to check my test pressure, it's still at 30 psi. And now with the light, I want to check behind all the valve seats. Check down the glow plug holes, the injector holes. And then undo the locking clamp on the machine and turn it round to check down the ports. spend a fair bit of time just making sure that there's absolutely no faults in any of the casting. Now the inject ports. So the other thing that I've uh, done is mounted the Rover V8 crankshaft on the mill and what I've got to do here is, is machine this keyway out all the way along so because uh, it runs a different oil it runs a different oil pump and front cover with this woodruff key fitted the front pulley only grips the keyway by about that much so all I'm going to do is just really carefully just machine this out so I can fit a longer woodruff key to keep the front pulley nice and tight. That's it, that's the keyway machined into the crank and it all fits and slides perfectly. So 
I'm going to just break this edge, just deburr it slightly and then get that through the cleaner, ready to refit. So this morning I've had a, a set of Bentley heads turn up or pair off a V8. Uh, the company's about 40 mile away from me, so I thought instead of them dropping them off, me skimming them and then them having to drive back and uh, pick them up, I'd do them while they wait. So this is the first head, we'll see how warped it is. the first one done that's had six thou to get it flat and it was a little bit warped around here but nothing nothing too bad really and what we'll say is the aluminium what they make the Bentley out the heads out of is really good aluminium how it all skims off it comes off in a nice way so all I'm doing now is just deburring the combustion chamber so I'll just use an old piston ring for that Then I'll unbolt this, chuck this one in the cleaner for five or ten minutes and get the second cylinder head on. Second head mounted on the machine and what I've done is this here is the depth of how low the machine comes to cut. So I've marked where I come to on the first cylinder head I've also took a measurement on the first cylinder head and I've took a measurement on the second head and now I'm going to skim it back to that mark and then just double check with the verniers that I take the same amount off to keep both the, the cylinder heads for the compression ratio and depth. So that's the second cylinder head skimmed, that's uh, skimmed to the same setting on the machine. This one actually wasn't warped but I've taken the same off just to keep them right. Quickly deburr this, put it in the cleaner for 10 minutes and the guy can uh, go back and get them fitted in the same day. So that's the pair of Bentleys, still steaming from the, from the hot tank. They're all washed now, I've just given them a, a light spray with some penetrant oil just to Stop the valves going rusty or anything, although they're stainless, so they shouldn't. But um, so yeah, I'm going to give them to the driver, and he can head back, and they can get them fitted. So we've got another vintage motorcycle barrel in for a rebore. It's got some quite bad pitting mark in there, and some water marks. The customer supplied his piston, which is um, plus forty oversize. So I'm going to set it up on the on the boring stand uh, get the machine cleaned and ready and uh, and we'll we'll video this getting bored and honed these are the screws that you lock the barrel onto the machine with so you you nip this one down first and then this one has got a little cam in here so you can't over tighten it so once it gets to the right torque that just slips round like that so I know that's now tight enough in there so it's ready to bore so that's it in the in in the boring stand so now it's just a case of setting the the boring bar up making sure the caps paws are, are the right size and everything got to make sure every single part of this machine is super clean because you don't want the machine to even be one thou of dirt on it, it would bore um, not straight, so or well not parallel. So it's got to be very clean.
with the cutter cleaned up um, on the diamond wheel on the on the end of the boring bar I've measured the piston I've got my clearance so now what I've got to do is set the tool so I cut it uh, about two thou small ready for honing so I just undo the locking screw and use the little pin and then wind the cutter tool in it's gonna to have to go in a fair bit because the last ball that I did was 3.2 inches and this has got to be 2.7 inches so we've got to wind it in a little bit measure twice cut once is the old engineering saying So the bore size that I'm aiming to get to is, let me just my notes. It's 2.6, the finish size is 2.6745. So I'm gonna bore it to 2.672 and then hone the rest out. Point seven now on here. Two point six six. There we are. So now I nip the locking screw up, wind it away, and then just bring it down again. It's 2.6, 50, 60, 70. That's absolutely bang on. So now I put the cutting tool into the boring bar. Make sure I tighten up the back of the boring bar. Bring the boring bar down to the top of the ball. And start to cut. While that's cutting, I'll set up the DTI. So I can have a measure up to get it to the perfect size, but I can put the boring tools away now. Boring bar has done its job. And that's left me three thousandths of an inch to take out of the uh, of the bore on the honer, and that will give me the right cross hats finished as well. Finish. So the next thing I'm going to do is mount it into the honer. I'll take my my worktop off, and then we'll get it home to size, and I'll show you the end result. So this is the BSA which I've bored and honed it to size. Um, I've given it just over an hour now to cool down. I've measured the bore again and I just need to blip another half a thou out of it. It's just tightened up where it's cooled. So that's an easy one.
And then what we're quickly going to do is change these honing stones and put some slightly finer ones in just to give the pour a slightly neater finish. So that's it, a quick final check. Absolutely, absolutely bang on. I don't know if the camera can pick that up. That's absolutely bang on zero. So good job. So the only thing I'm going to do now is um, just uh, the only thing I'm going to do now is just blip up and down it with virtually no pressure on it, just to remove the little marks that the ball on the DTI leaves. Uh, it just annoys me a little bit, and I'd rather the ball look perfect. So. <laughs> Move the honer out of the way. Just flip this up to let the uh, honing oil drain off it. Unscrew the locking bar. And all I'm going to do is just break the edge off this and then stick it in the cleaner ready for the customer. But I'm really happy with the finish of that, it looks lovely. So another good job done. So that's the single cylinder barrel, all nicely bored, it's come out of the wash now. So the last thing to do is just to make sure that the piston fits nice in the cylinder. Oh, which it does, fits perfect. So there we go, that one's all finished, ready for the customer. So that's it, that's the end of this video. Um, thanks for watching everyone. Sorry it's been a bit of a delay between um, videos. Just been really busy trying to do bits on the workshop and get a few engines ready out and out the door for the, for the coming race season. Um, I can say thanks for watching the video. If you could leave the word piston in the comments section below. If you're watching it and you haven't subscribed, if you could subscribe, please. That would mean a lot to us. Um, we're going to try and get another video out straight away. There's enough footage for another video straight away. So it's Tuesday today. This video will go out hopefully tonight. Um, Tracy's started to edit the, the next one. So hopefully that video will go out Friday night. So we'll try and catch up and make up for the, for the gaps. Um, I think that's about it really, like I say a lot of work has gone out through the door, um, there's a lot of work that's come through the door which we've got to get done, um, so yeah thanks everybody for watching, take care, see you soon.